BioBalance HealthCast Episode 160, Sex and the Mature Single. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. This week, Kathy and I are going to talk about uh, clients that we have in common that we've shared who have the issue of getting older and being single and as a part of that question uh, or problem that these these people face we want to talk about uh, getting older in the most healthy way uh, being the most vibrant and energetic and healthy person that you can be we want to talk about the part of that that has to do with libido and sex drive and then we want to talk about those individuals who are in those categories who are single because they are widowed or divorced or alone for some other reason mm -hmm. and do they have this energy and what do they do with this energy and how if you're in the market and you're 40, 50, 60, how do you find somebody? Mm -hmm. where, where do you go in this day and age? I, mm -hmm. I tell you a story, I, I was at uh, County Library the other day doing some research for something that you wanted me to, to look into <laughs> and I'm standing at the computer and this elderly gentleman, little tiny, neat, well-dressed, clean as a pen, sharp old guy, was hovering just, just outside the computer area. And I thought he was waiting to access the computer, so I'm <laughs> you know, trying to get through. But a couple people came and went, and he's still hovering. And, and finally, I finished with what I was doing. I looked up, and he was staring at me, and I said, can I help you? And he sidles up next to me, and he says, do you know anything about computers? And he's just been watching me work yeah. on it. I said, well, I, a little bit. How can I help you? And he pulls out this little slip of paper. And and, <laughs> and aside, he was he was reeking with cologne. really fine cologne. Ooh, I mean, yeah. he really put the whole bottle on. But <laughs> cute little guy. And he says, I have this name and phone number of a woman I met in a bar. And I'd like <laughs> to look her How up cute. and see what I can find out about her. And I, and I said, well, I, there's a way to do that, but it'll probably cost you money. I said, I can show you how to access mm -hmm. it, but what they say is, well, you, you know, we found her, she's in here, we can tell you about her, but it's gonna cost mm -hmm. you $20. I said, do you wanna do mm -hmm. that? A background he, check. He said, well, just talk to me for a minute. He said, I'm 84 years old, and I met this woman in a bar, and she's <laughs> 50. I bet it was at four o'clock in the afternoon. I don't know what, <laughs> when it was or what it was, 80. but he said, she's <laughs> really nice and she really, you know, likes me. And he said, I'm worried uh, because I think I'm just being an old fool. And he oh. said, there's no fool like an old fool. And I don't know if she's just wanting a sugar daddy or if she's interested in me. And so, isn't that cute? That's a, I mean, I oh, think that's it's so cute. sweet, it's sweet, but it's, but it's sad. heartbreaking it and is. sad. And so I said, well, you know, you're 84 years old. You get what you pay for. I mean, if you want this girl to, to be on your arm and take her to dinner and feel good about yourself, if you want more from her in a physical sense, I mean. How did he know you were a counselor? I, I mean, don't know. He just knew. I, I don't know. I said, <laughs> but what you can't do is sell yourself a bill of goods. You can't convince yourself that she's in love with you or you're in love with her and it'll all just be wonderful. You have to be realistic because if she is in it for what you can provide. Are you willing to provide that for what she can provide? Mm -hmm. Which is a question we all have to ask about relationships. What are the trade-offs mm -hmm. in the relationships? What am I looking for? What do I want? Where am I empty? And that brings us to your part of the conversation. When people get old and their tank gets empty in terms of the hormones, and in particular testosterone, mm -hmm. and their libido goes away, and their, their uh, lividity goes away, and their vivaciousness goes away, can you do something to help them get it back? And mm -hmm. if it comes back and suddenly they're feeling better, what about this other energy and what do they do? So, so that's the kind of what- The sexual energy is what you're referring to. The sexual energy. Okay. And, then, and then what do you do with that? I mean, if, if you right. have somebody that is 67 years old and mm -hmm. single, but sexually alive, mm -hmm. where do they go? Well, there, there's many, there's many um, of my patients that come in and they're, either newly single, mm -hmm. and they're coming to me because they want to be healthier, they want to get their sex drive back, they want to be, these are women, they want to be beautiful again, sometimes sure. it's men, they're, but they're newly single for whatever reason. They're usually in their 50s, it's not usually 80, but it could be. 
and and they want my advice on mm -hmm. getting regaining their health, but they also want my advice on regaining their sexuality. And oftentimes, they really want that. That's great. They know what to do with their sexuality, mm -hmm. even if they're single. But some of them are afraid to have their sexuality back because they don't have a partner, and they're afraid they'll be stupid, and they're afraid that their sexuality will overcome overwhelm them, and they'll they'll have many partners, or they'll they, and it, testosterone doesn't work like that. Testosterone brings back who you were before. Yeah, it doesn't make you have the somebody, ability to say no before. You yes, still have the ability yeah, to say yeah, no. It you're, doesn't make you. You're not going to be some drug zombie out there just having <laughs> sex with the mailman because your your hormones fired up. That's that's absolutely correct, and I don't say it quite like that. But they're but, afraid of that. But they're afraid of that, yeah. and and so we have we talk about what to do with self manipulation and things like that. That women over. Now, women over 55 don't know a lot about vibrators and things like that. Well, so they we, were raised in we a culture where they that. were taught that masturbation the, was a sin. And I tell them that yeah. babies masturbate right. in the womb. In the womb. So how can it be a sin if they're not even born yet and they're masturbating? You know, that's, they're just having, they're obtaining pleasure from an area of the body that always gives pleasure. And mm -hmm. if it's if it's more comfortable for them mm -hmm. to be alone with their sexuality before they have the um, confidence to go out and date or go to an online dating service or mm -hmm. have a friend set them up, then you know, then that's a good way to use your sexuality in a in a positive way because having sex is healthy. Having sex is good for you. Mm -hmm. It makes all we're of made your, that way. We're made that way. We were made for being sexual beings. We were just not not made to live longer than forty something. <laughs> so now we have all of this time at the end of our lives, we're still supposed to be sexual beings. Well, but we weren't made to be indiscriminate sexual beings. No, no, I didn't mean and, that. And no, you didn't mean that and, and neither do I. What what we're talking about is the complex chain of circumstances about culture and physiology, mm -hmm. uh, religion, morality, sexual attraction. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do we have boundaries and define lines that we can be at peace with ourselves about? What does our society say we can or can't do or should or shouldn't do? Mm -hmm. and there's, there's lots and lots of research out there uh, that talks about the level of infidelity. In, mm -hmm. in marriages. If, if we were supposed to die at 40 or 45, if that was the life expectancy for primitive man, and you've got people that have been married 50 or 60 years, mm -hmm. and in our culture, the idea of getting married to somebody is you commit, I will only be sexual with you now for mm -hmm. the rest of my life. Somewhere along that 50 year journey, a significant percentage of people fall off the wagon. Yeah. What makes it, that happen? And, People and change over 50 it? years where you, they didn't change as much over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, I mean, many women died in childbirth, so men had successive wives, mm -hmm. you know, while, I mean, that was just the facts. Mm -hmm. Not, I mean, if you go back to the Old Testament, it seems that that didn't always happen. But when you look at death rates and, and that, it, that's what had to happen uh, in, in the beginning of our civilization. But now we're in the 21st century and we're looking at a long life and sit, being single for, for whatever reason. And what do we do with this? So my patients come in and, and I, I try to make them healthy. That's my first, right. my first goal. But I also, to be healthy, want their sexuality to come back. And so that's part of the role of testosterone. And for women also estrogen so that they don't have pain when they have intercourse or right. have any kind of um, fondling or anything of that area. Then. Without estrogen, it's usually painful. So, so you try to restore the physiology, the mechanics of the system that need to be tuned up and repaired. Right, is just what by replacing you do. what they're missing. But you are aware that just having a, a, a mechanically perfect automobile doesn't drive it down the road. And True. so people have to bring themselves with their system out into the marketplace mm -hmm. of relationships. And so you, even though that's not your specialty, you get a lot of questions about I do. what do I do? And especially with, from women of an older age who were raised in a culture that said any kind of self-awareness. Uh, self-awareness in what way? Se sexual self-awareness? I, I was smiling because I was at a conference uh, two years ago in, uh, in Baltimore and I was talking to a sex therapist 
and she was saying that she has all these women's groups, middle-aged mm -hmm. and older women, and she said, I, I always start the conversation by asking them to imagine answering a question. Not to answer it, but to imagine answering mm -hmm. the question. And I, the question is, what I really like about my vagina is. <laughs> and she said, okay, they so are horrified. <laughs> they, are, they are stunned. They're like deer in the headlight. And it's like, we don't talk about that. We don't mm -hmm. think about that. I don't know how to answer that question. That's a question, question I've never asked a patient. I, well, she's a <laughs> sex therapist. <laughs> But, so, I mean, it does seem kind no, of unusual. No, but what I'm saying is that the cultural messages that these women have already internalized about their sexuality, mm -hmm. about self-stimulation, autoeroticism, about gratification for the sake of pleasure as opposed to the say, and I mean pleasure not just in the immediate sexual release pleasure, but pleasure in the sense of generally feeling better, mm -hmm. uh, of having relief in your life because sex is a part of your life. Mm -hmm. Those are not things that women of that age were ever encouraged to think about or discuss or But we're or coming to absorb. the end of that. We are. As women get, as, as women who were born in the 60s and 70s mm -hmm. are now coming to the fore, they had much more liberal training, I think, I believe. And they seem to embrace this a lot easier, especially when one of, one of their partners is, is gone, when their partner is gone. One of my patients that, let's talk pheromones for a second. One of my patients had, um, came to me with this, I don't know what's gonna happen if I get my sex life back, I don't, right. but I really want someone to share my life with. Her goal was, I want somebody who I'm compatible with, who I'm, who I'm, um, friends with but also who, who has a great sex life with me I still want a sex life mm -hmm. and I I really need to know that this is going to at least help me in some ways I said well it will help you in many ways but it's going to help you in a way that you have no idea that, that you have no um, consciousness about because she was saying I can't meet guys I never you know I, I'm around guys all the time no one ever looks at me as mm -hmm. a sexual I'm object invisible. I go through the world and nobody notices right and I remember the time when I was walking with my daughter and they started looking at my, people would look at my daughter and not look at me at all. And I went, <laughs> what am I, chopped liver? I am chopped liver now. That was before <laughs> testosterone was replaced. But this patient, I said, here's the deal. You're going to, this is going to help you look better, feel better, get your, you know, fertile waistline back. And, and you're going to have to do some work too. But mm -hmm. this is going to really help you. Now, one of the things that you're not you're, you are going to notice because of the outcome, but you won't see it happening, is that you're going to start making pheromones. So don't put too much, too much um, cologne on. Honestly, you're making your own pheromones. They actually are an unspoken draw to men, and you then get to choose who you think is a, a companion, a friend, somebody who you could have a sex life with. Mm -hmm. So it's your choice then. She came back four months later. She said, I can't believe it. I'm back to my, she was so, she even spoke differently. I'm back to my normal self and men have been approaching me and they've been asking me out to dinner and I didn't have to do a thing. Yeah. She said, I, I look better and she did. She had color in her face and she went and did her hair and she put some makeup on. She had a lovely dress on. She said, but you're not gonna believe this. It's exactly what you said. She said, I was sitting. Right on a plane with about a 30 year old and she's about 52 or 53. And this 30 year old boy, which I call boy, <laughs> um, was talking to her and flirting with her. Mm -hmm. And then finally asked her to go to dinner with him when they got to their uh, destination. She said, I said, you know, I have to tell you how old I am. And he goes, I don't care. He said, I want to go to dinner with you. You're very interesting, and you, have, you just have this air about you. Well, she had pheromones about her. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, she said, I was embarrassed, and no, I didn't go to dinner with him, but I was, I was flattered, and mm -hmm. I told him how flattered I was. Mm -hmm. So she has a new lease on life because her sexuality's back. Mm -hmm. And I remember what that was like when it went away. It was like, you are invisible. Right. I mean, to the opposite sex, you're just psh, not there. Well, and in relationships, if you're in a relationship and you're not alone, and your sexuality goes away, you're not being mean or cruel or hateful or avoidant to your partner. You just don't feel that and you mm -hmm. aren't thinking about that. And so they can be out there signaling, giving you the high sign and whatever. And unless, unless they get in front of you <laughs> and specifically say, hey, I, I need to have some attention here, 
you're not likely to notice or think about it. Mm -hmm. And so that creates real problems in a relationship. Yeah, it does. And, and that's, that's sometimes the rift of why the first relationship right. went awry. Yes. And, sometime, and so then my patients come in and say, I don't want to do that again. I don't yeah. want to have that happen to me again. I want to be responsive and I want to be my, like my old self. Mm -hmm. So after they have this back, right. you know, and they have them, their, themselves back, then they have to learn how, how, where can you meet people who are likely candidates, men who actually want to have a relationship, mm -hmm. don't just want one night stands or something, you know, often that's, that's, that's a normal male it's not reaction. Always men. I have a client who's 54 years old and divorced and she's been having a relationship with a 22 year old man just for the sex. She didn't want anything from this guy except really wahoo sex and she said I have no interest in him and when I get saturated I'm going to pass him along then I'm going to look for somebody I'm interested in. Whoa. Uh, so it's not just men <laughs> who can approach that issue that way. That's but that's a relationship, it's a sexual relationship. Yes. I'm talking about one night stand different people. Yeah. That's more of a male yeah, no, no, no. She's kind of trying thought. to wear this young man out and then bag him. At least I that's what she tells I me. I can't really go there. I mean, I don't think my <laughs> patients tell me that stuff. That's well, I have one who does. Yeah. And she's she's single and she's going to remain single and and she has lots of guy friends and many of them are under thirty and she's my age, fifty eight. But but before I distracted you, the point that you were making is if part of your first relationship or previous relationship ended because you lost your libido. Right. And That's you come common. in now and say, if I do these pellets and I get my libido back, how do I then go out on the market and find somebody to have a healthy and wholesome relationship mm -hmm. with? And that's just a huge issue in our society. It is. Where, it where is. do you go to meet people? Do you go on electronic websites? Do you go to eHarmony or JDate or some well, of the other? You'd be surprised how many people do go on eHarmony e oh, yeah. no, or no, it's I wouldn't. just I've lunch. I've talked to hundreds of people that, and, that go on those sites. And oftentimes they're just looking for <laughs> Not all a, of whom are single. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I don't yeah. need to know that. Well. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's... Uh, Kathy, I, I'm going to tell you this. Yeah. I, I, I realize it might shock you. People lie. <laughs> that's the first thing they tell you in medical school, <laughs> that people won't give you the, the history. So, that, so when you go on yeah, these sites, people they, lie. Yeah. And they tell you, oh, I drive a Porsche, and I have millions, and I'm single, and they drive a, a Civic, and they don't have any money, and they're married and have kids. So okay, you, well, you and they have their face out. on there. That's scary. Some of them don't even do that. They have somebody else's picture. Oh, oh, okay. I mean, it's so, crazy. I, mean I just but, am not, I, I'm unaware of that just because I've never gone through the process. But, or but the question, I talked to, to I talked to somebody that was single the other day, and, and we live in the St. Louis area. And so in the St. Louis area, there are age bracket bars yeah, that people are. who are single go to. Mm -hmm. So the 20-somethings go to this bar, and the 30-somethings go to this bar, and the 40-somethings. And there, there are people that know that, and they cruise the market. Mm -hmm depending on what they're looking for. There are other people that tell me, I go to the gym, or I go to the grocery uh -huh. store, or I go to church. You know, where are you going to find single men or women in a category that you're looking for? And, and women in particular are going to be frustrated because a lot of the men who are 60 are not looking for 60-year-old women. That's or right. even 50 year old women. Mm -hmm. And so the women say, I got to find somebody that's 70, and that's not going to solve my problem. It's just turnabout. When we're young, mm -hmm. we have a huge age range of people that we could be interested in. Right. So young men in general don't have that. They have mm -hmm. usually the women their age or younger. They don't, but when we're young, we can have a relationship with anybody in our society. Right. But as we being women. We being women. Yeah. So then when we flip, we flip it, as we get older, we aren't in control anymore. We aren't in command of the, sec the sexual relationship or e the selection process. The selection process. That's what I really meant. And that, so that, it's just flip side. And so we have to realize it's just, you know, we took advantage of it when we were young, and now they're taking advantage of it as they're older. And a lot of men, I mean, they got burned. They don't want to have another marriage. Right. And they don't want to, conf you know, conflict with their children and their children's families. So, yeah, I kind, I kind of get that. There's mm -hmm. also women out there like that. Mm -hmm. I know many women who just want to have a relationship, but they don't want to marry. 
They don't want to have the marriage. As you're, as you're talking, I'm thinking about a couple that I know that are in the, both in their 70s. They're both widowed, and they both have grown children, and they both have their own houses and their own money. But, but they're together constantly, and they're sexually active together. Mm -hmm. But they don't envision themselves living together or marrying because of the complications of estate planning right. and kids and grandkids. Uh, and and but they're of a generation where that's new thinking, you right. know, to that be that open thinking. about it, to be able to say this is what we have. They travel together, they take vacations together. But in the next twenty years, we'll see a lot of that. We'll see more and more because of that. That's the generation, the generations coming up that did live together before they got married, and so they don't have that same yes. issue. Yes. Yes. Um, and it's it's religious, but it's also societal. So so we're really talking about two things. We're we're talking about if you have lost the physiological component of libido and sexuality and you come to Kathy and you get that restored which you can do and even in your 70s and 80s people mm -hmm. report hey that's come back for me in a, in a containable in a good way. A good way in a good way not in a I'm addicted and I'm out of control and I'm you know legally in trouble no. uh, <laughs> but in a good that's way not, that's not and then the at all. secondary portion of this and actually it's true whether you're single or whether you're in a relationship, is how do I relate and explore my sexuality in a way and in a relationship where it's compatible and fulfilling and okay with who I am, religiously, morally, economically, in terms mm -hmm. of my extended family. Will my grandkids, you know, be horrified? Uh, and how do you deal and, with that? And it's more relating to people who are single because usually the grandchildren don't have to be horrified if you're married. Well, but you got you got stories to tell. You know, mm -hmm. if we take a family vacation and I have a 14-year-old that I've been saying, okay, you have to be sexually responsible, you're going through puberty, you got to make these choices, there are limits, there are rules, you can do this, you can't do that. And we're taking grandma who's 77 and her boyfriend oh, yeah. Yeah. and they're going to have the same room. And the 14-year-old's looking at me like, why can grandma shack up if I can't? I didn't even think about so that. So there are yeah. there are conversations Those. that you, know, you need to think, think about. I think that takes care of itself because they don't expect anybody, like Miley Cyrus said, over 40 to have sex. To have sex, yeah. They're just sleeping there because it's, yeah. they're sleeping they're there. Just, they're they don't think saving it money on a room. Because they're <laughs> sort of narcissistically self-absorbed. Yeah, that's true. But that's true. some but of them will ask those questions. Some of them questions. are smart enough and aware enough to yeah. figure that out. But, but we were, I, this is the information we've learned from our patients. Right. But from interacting with them, from them coming back and telling us how they feel, what they do, how their successes. I have a patient that got married to her next door neighbor um, about six months after you were telling me about her. she after she um, had her pellets because he never paid attention to her and she never paid they attention to him. They lived next door to each other for years. Ten years. Did not see each other as partnership potential. Right. Just as a nice neighbor lives next door. Right. And then, and then suddenly, after after her testosterone's back. Yeah. They're married six months later. When your testosterone That's not is a gone, bad thing. <laughs> when, when your testosterone is gone and you have no libido, it's like lights are on, nobody's home. When mm -hmm. you get that back, lights are on in somebody's home. And people recognize that somebody's home and they go, hello, and <laughs> things right. can happen. That's right. So that's, that's, my, that's my message is yeah. that if you feel like you have nowhere to go, mm -hmm. if you feel like you can never get this back, if you feel invisible and... And if, if you're over 40, and it sometimes happens even earlier than 50, right. then getting your testosterone back if you're lacking is one of the ways to, to actually Restore feel your like life. yourself. And my message is that even if that happens, there are still relationship issues and dating pattern issues mm -hmm. and boundary issues that you're going to have to face. It's not as simple as getting a pellet. It doesn't all just no, it doesn't. get better and go away because you got the pellets. So it's a two-sided coin. You have to work both pieces. And that's why you have, you have family therapists and mm -hmm. clinicians like myself, or even just you know, priests, pastors, friends, uh, that you need to be talking to about, as I become this vibrant, healthy person again, how do I play that hand? In books like cl uh, Cloud, Mm -hmm. wrote the book on boundaries. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a good book to, to refer to. It's right. not necessarily sexual, it's just boundaries. Boundaries, period. Which would be a so, good book for almost everyone to read. So, so I guess at the end of the conversation, the message is life is an adventure and you have to live it every day until you die and go out and embrace it uh, in the, the healthiest, most vigorous way that you can. Amen. Amen.
Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.